People ask me all the time, Brandon Fugel, are you a believer now? Yeah. The owner of Skinwalker Ranch. And I tell them, no, I'm not a believer. I'm an experiencer. What the hell? Holy shit, right there. Welcome to Skinwalker Ranch. What are you doing there? The world's greatest and most freaky paranormal hotspot located in the Uinta Basin in Western Utah. If you think Sedona, Arizona, Dolce, New Mexico, and Joshua Tree, California are trippy, just wait until you learn about Skinwalker. First, a little bit of history. In the 19th century, the area primarily consisted of two Indian tribes, the Navajo and the Utes. During the Civil War, the Utes partnered with the U.S. government in a battle against the Navajo. Suffering a brutal defeat and feeling betrayed, the Navajo cursed the local land with skinwalkers. What are skinwalkers, you might ask? Malevolent, shape-shifting entities that can take various forms but often resemble demonic werewolves. In the 90s, a family named the Shermans took over the ranch and were basically haunted off the property. They encountered orbs, UFOs, skinwalkers, and even got rushed by an oversized bipedal wolf that they claimed was able to withstand a close-range attack from a shotgun. All of this anomalous activity caught the eye of Robert Bigelow the Vegas-based budget suites billionaire who has a family history of paranormal activity and has made it his life's mission to pour all of his real estate money into UFOs and paranormal research. Between 2007 and 2012, it became the center of study for ATIP, the official government UFO program led by Lou Elizondo. Because this program was also run under the auspices of Bigelow Aerospace, a private company, all of the data from it is both classified and not subject to the Freedom of Information Act. The only information you can find about Skinwalker from this era lies in two books, The Hunt for the Skinwalker and Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. I'm including links to both below. When I acquired the ranch, one of the things that I found amusing is an old little golden book, Lone Ranger, that had been discarded long ago. The current owner of the ranch is a guy named Brandon Fugel. He's a real estate mogul and patron for Frontier Science. Fugel has gathered a team of hard-headed scientists to gather real data on all of the bizarre anomalies around the ranch. They've set up various sensors and run constant experiments, and unlike their government predecessors, they plan to open source the data and share it with the public. I won't tell you what it is, what the physical significance of this is. I just want you to look at it and tell me if you see any interesting patterns. And then I'll tell you what it is. Fugel's team has encountered some pretty insane stuff. Electromagnetic anomalies with phones, electronics, and tri-field meters. They've seen orbs, cattle mutilations. They've personally experienced biological effects. In fact, visitors, along with members of their team, have been hospitalized. They even have photos and live footage of UFOs in the airspace of the property. A lot of this is documented in a fantastic docu-series which can be found on the History Channel and Netflix called The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. Could an alien craft be creating a wormhole causing an electromagnetic fallout affecting visitors of the property? Are these wormholes manipulating space-time? What does the Native American history have to do with these paranormal observables? We'll take you a few steps further down the rabbit hole on today's long overdue episode of American Alchemy at Skinwalker Ranch. Different parts of the brain have different activities. <laughs> but you know that, don't you? You mean people that you do a lot. Maybe you should interview me. You do want to keep things like the Loch Ness Monster and spoon bending away from the UFO conversation if you can. Now, the thing that goes against what I'm saying is something like cattle mutilation. Uh -huh. So either somebody is an amazing sadistic animal hoaxer, or you have to open the UAP story to their decision to study cattle or leave cattle as presents for us or who knows what. What in the world? One of the most disturbing things to happen on Skinwalker Ranch was when a perfectly healthy two-year-old heifer cow showed up dead with no exterior injuries. There's no cat tracks, no sign of struggle. Middle of the it's day. It's just dead. An autopsy revealed that pneumonia had done the cow in. Pneumonia brought on by a severe stressor that seemed to shock the animal. But there were no tracks of predators nearby. 
Simultaneously, the team was picking up high levels of radiation around the cow with their EM detectors, higher levels than if they were standing in front of a microwave. My phone starts freaking out whenever your tri-field goes off. I don't have any control over my phone right now. Brandon and the team checked the surveillance footage in the control room, finding something pretty disturbing. The cow is right here. What we'll do is go forward very slowly and watch what happens with her. It seems like the moment the cow feels a disturbance, a UFO-shaped object appears directly above it. Yo, whoa, 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 whoa. The next frame, the object is here. The old adage, correlation does not imply causation, might apply here. But with no animal tracks, a detected radioactive burst, and a mysterious object in the sky directly above the cow, maybe this cattle mutilation doesn't have a prosaic explanation. The moment that that object appeared, the cow was reacting. Yes. We know this symbol signifies as above, so below. The question is, why here? Nobody knows who made this engraving or why. Perhaps it's the work of Augustus Wally, a legendary Buffalo soldier decorated with the Medal of Honor. The Buffalo soldiers were a group of African-American cavalry in the 19th century. Some thought they had a background in Freemasonry. But what about the message, as above, so below? Does this mean that the Earth and its materials are some low-level instantiation or reflection of a more platonic realm? Are there correlations between the skies and the ground? Let's focus on what's below first. The focal point of most of the electromagnetic anomalies is the mesa, the rocky ridge that lines the northward edge of the property. Fugel's team used soil resistivity and ground penetrating radar to basically figure out that there was a large metallic object buried underneath the property below the mesa. The group called in a drill expert, Aaron Blunt, to drill into the mesa and find out what was underneath. The drill first went horizontally, but when it attempted to turn upward, it hit a hard object that it couldn't break through should go through that layer pretty easily. But it's not, and it's not. It scouted the edges of it and concluded it was a hard object 400 feet wide buried in the mesa. They collected hundreds of shards that were deposited which appeared to be metal. Oh my. They took the samples to a metallurgist, Dr. Ravi Chandran, who revealed that they were fused metal and contained europium and tellurium. This means that they were likely manufactured and not naturally occurring. This material was manufactured as opposed to a natural occurrence? Yes, I'm inclined to think that way too. So what the hell were these deliberately manufactured rare earth elements doing buried in the mesa? Characteristic of the ranch, when the group went to get a visual of the possible UFO with a snake camera, a huge boulder blocked the entrance to the chamber where the metal object was, and they were once again left in the dark. The group then turned to the sky. The patch of sky that continues to give the group the most trouble is an area known as the Triangle. It seems like there's some invisible force that tampers with their equipment every time they try to measure anything in this region of the air. This time, they decided to use a 15-foot rocket with GPS sensors and chalk that would map and coat any invisible objects hovering above. Uh -oh. That motor blew. After the first rocket launch failed due to internal combustion, they transitioned to the backup. However, when the backup was launched, something very strange happened. There it goes! It made an abrupt deflection to the west as if it were avoiding something. There was no wind to push the rocket as dramatically westward as it went. Why did the rocket avoid that one spot directly above the triangle? Well, it could have been avoiding a UFO. Not only did Fugel's whole team see a UFO, cameras later revealed that a UFO came into and out of the sky at exactly the same time the rocket was launched. Oh my gosh, hey, it disappeared. Can you replay that? Yeah. As you can see, the UFO moves in and out of the sky, seemingly provoked by the rocket launch. There was also very high gamma radiation detected right next to the triangle by the EM detectors attached to the rocket. Is there a craft flying into and out of the mesa, and does it have something to do with this 400-foot metallic object mysteriously buried under the ground? As the inscription says, as above, so below. Do you guys have a theory as to why when you dig more paranormal stuff, 
happens. We don't know why. There's obviously a causal relationship. There's a cause and effect. When I told my new friend and director of ATIP, Lou Elizondo, I was visiting Skinwalker Ranch, he told me to pray and humble myself. I soon found out why. Welcome to Homestead 2. Thank you. This is the site of so many things. The, the energy in here is, uh, feels interesting. <laughs> well, it was interesting. We, we had Post Malone, and he had a whole security detail with him. We're talking armed to the teeth. They ended up having an, an experience. They ended up seeing a spectral no image dart through really? and up through the roof. One of the most serious illnesses brought on by the ranch was on October 14th, 2016. Touring the property was a group of 11 people, including a prominent doctor and his security detail, which included a six foot four former Hell's Angel member named George. Uh, I went to the top of the mesa to get a nice panorama and the phone started glitching. Whoa. Yeah. You've never seen your phone, do you? Yeah. Never. That's, Just after. That's a very important point. That's an never. Image. At that point, members of the group started to report feelings of vertigo and nausea. I asked, where's our security? Where's the big guy? And right off in the distance, in this open air Polaris UTV, stood this big six foot four figure. And as, as I walked up just a few feet from the, the ranger and said his name again, yelled his name, George. His eyes fluttered open. He looks down at me and he says, whoa, that was weird. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, when we pulled up, and you all jumped out. I stood up and was fro frozen. I couldn't move and everything went black. And then he asked me, he said, how long have I been standing here? And I said, probably about 10 minutes. George later described feeling scopesthesia, the sense that he was being watched or the object of predation. The next morning, he checked himself in the hospital down in Las Vegas. He couldn't, he couldn't walk. He couldn't walk, he was immobilized. There were no biomarkers to indicate what had incapacitated him. George was completely out of commission for the next three to four weeks. Is it a coincidence he was Hell's Angels? You're asking the right question. <laughs> it seems that those people who have experienced these, these kinds of events are sort of the uh, headstrong, the alpha male, the uh, aggressive, whether they're actually showing aggression, I'm sure. It's tempting to conclude that there may have been some alteration of brain structures <clears throat> as a result of exposure to whatever it is. Do you have a sense of what the exact brain structure difference is? Yes, I, I've had it described to me, but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Because I know, I know Nolan talks about caudate nucleus and the patamen. Thank you. <laughs> you, you said it. So it's an area that I've talked about before between the head of the caudate and the patamen that had an increased neural density. His view is not that um, an encounter uh, makes that part of the brain more neuronally dense. His view is that those people had more neuronally dense basal ganglia yes. prior, and that made them more predisposed to sort of seeing. That's how it's, yeah, right. And so um, there have been a few comments made that suggest that maybe that density changes as a result of the, of the exposure. But the story gets even crazier. That day, everyone's cell phone batteries went from 80% to zero. The group interrupted their tour to let their phones recharge. It was on the drive back to retrieve their phones that they saw something in the sky. All of a sudden, the other security professional shouts, stop the vehicle, stop the vehicle. And I'm driving and I, and I ask, well, what's going on? And he's, he's pointing up ahead and I look to exactly where he's pointing, straight ahead of us above the mesa and there is literally a silver grayish disc-like object about a hundred feet above the mesa just sitting there suspended in the air and all of a sudden that object changed position probably moved i don't know 50 feet to the left in the blink of an eye and then a few seconds later it was reduced to a dot it, it was like a bullet darting off in the distance and was gone that experience changed my entire worldview. my paradigm shifted I think Richard Feynman had like a speech about why UFOs are bogus. Uh -huh. And it's like, 
all of the things observed on this property. It's like yeah. blue orbs, yes. Yes. metallic crafts, yes. the humming sound, like it's like all this, and it's because, and you can't, it's hard to create a theory out of it. The phone thing feels key, cause if you can recreate that somehow in a lab. I love where you, you, you see, you should have been doing this job instead of me. <laughs> no, I... definitely not. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you may offer an explanation for some of what we've been seeing on the property. It's the very large neodymium magnet. And so what I'm seeing is that when I go through a certain point, and I'll get the effect. And, I, and I'm getting exactly the effect that I saw on top of the mason. In fact, you can just picture it. You know, it's, it's, there's a big divergent field at the, at the corner. So maybe that surrounds the UFO. Well, maybe steps. You know, I do baby steps, but yes, yes, I see where you're going. Well, you. it would make sense uh, if you, because everybody talks about anti-gravity. Uh -huh. But if you were to really try to um, defeat gravity, you would probably do it with EM. Well, we do know that, that people have been working on things like an EM drive for yeah. quite some time, and, and it's very interesting stuff. Maybe it's a magnetic field around the craft that senses the magnetic field of the Earth and then uses that as GPS. Like they have, Lockheed has like a quantum yeah. magnetometer that they use as GPS, mm -hmm. so why couldn't a UFO do that? I don't believe that the study of UFO activity from fast walkers that are, that are being tracked by our our systems to even programs dealing with remote viewing. I don't believe that any of that has either gone dark or ceased. I think it has only been shifted into yeah. the private sector, into the special access programs. Certainly aerospace corporations have knowledge in the UAP area that specifically are sequestered by, against FOIA. Oh. Because of proprietary I appreciate labels, that. which the whole thing was set up to be that way, on purpose. I liken it to a big puzzle. If you were to lay a puzzle out on a table, and you were to divvy pieces, corners of that puzzle out, and then these highly territorial factions that are in silos are created and they're all vying for budget dollars for both legit yeah, yeah, conventional yeah. projects and others. Cool. And the problem is when people, no one has the whole puzzle or an image of the whole puzzle, but they have pieces, they have corners of the puzzle. So Homestead 3, which is where we're going next, is where a lot of people have negative experiences for whatever reason. My wife refuses to go inside. But you gotta go get a picture in the chair. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing any of that shit. Get into the fetal position in preparation. It seems like every time they engage in scientific inquiry into the ranch, the instrumentation always malfunctions. GPS, EM, LiDAR sensors, even photogrammetry exercises all produce something wildly out of place. We could do a whole documentary series on just the electromagnetic anomalies and the equipment malfunctions and failures that occur constantly during the process of documenting. One of the first things Eric Barr did after Brandon Fugel took over the ranch was update the surveillance cameras. So these are the kinds of cameras that were being used. I want you to understand where the bar is set. He used a lot of the same vantage points as Bigelow, but he decided to use one additional camera to monitor the control room itself. We had experienced some really peculiar things going on with our equipment, as was experienced with uh, with the previous groups. The camera had motion detection and Eric would monitor the control room remotely, getting a ping every time motion was detected. One morning after getting woken up by multiple pings, he got so frustrated that he decided to sit at the screen with the live feed of the control room and see what was causing it. I am transfixed on that tacky room. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, I'm in that room. And so I just, uh, I, I said out loud, okay, this is stupid. And then I said, all right, if you got something you want to show me, show me. If you got something you want to tell me, tell me. Once I did that, what happened was the screen began to do this. Now I was like, that's cool. Let me click back out and click back in and did it again. Screen grab, right? Now I, I got like, I want to say eight or 10 of those. And I was like, there's a bug here. That's what's sending the messages. There's a problem with the equipment. The first screen grab Eric made after issuing his challenge produced this telling artifact. What the hell? I living? That's creepy. Remember, the label was trailer living room. Follow the sequence of events. I said, if you got something you want to tell me, 
tell me. Then this is the immediate first what? screenshot. Oh God. <laughs> no, no. This is like out of a horror movie. Oh, exactly. Is this a coincidence or is this a trickster entity communicating in cryptographic ways? It really feels like the group at Skinwalker Ranch is dealing with a conscious entity that shows itself when it wants to be seen. It's almost like the God of the Old Testament that's weakly entangled with reality, speaking through signs, prophets, and cryptographic messages. Do these entities have our best interest at heart? Do they mean us harm? Or do they just incidentally come into contact with us? Has alien technology and metamaterials mustered the energy necessary to warp space-time? Does this ability to warp space-time create an electromagnetic fallout that affects visitors of Skinwalker Ranch? I can't deny that which I've seen with my own eyes. Yeah. And you couple with that other witnesses, electromagnetic anomalies that occur simultaneous with so many of these events, and it, it's undeniable. Yeah. It's not a question of belief. Right. It's now understanding the nature of what we are interacting with. You know, we've been steeped in this stuff, right? Ancient aliens, right? So let's take some ancient, ancient, prehistoric tech that is artificially intelligent and meant to take its directives through a non-contact neural interface with a, with a superior neurology to ours. And it's pinging us and it's recognizing what look kind of like handshaking <laughs> and, and we almost get there. And then some random stuff in our head manifests as this nonsense that's called Skinwalker Ranch Phenomenology. This episode begets so many fundamental questions. Are certain people with more neuronally dense basal ganglias more likely to witness paranormal activity on the ranch? How are people biologically affected after they make contact on the ranch? In Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, Colm Kelleher, George Knapp, and James Lukatsky report hitchhiker effects among many of the scientists that studied at Skinwalker Ranch. In fact, the phenomenon often followed these people home. Was this interdimensional portal at Skinwalker Ranch created by the Navajo? Was it created by the Buffalo Soldiers? Was it created by the government and its recent studies? Leave a comment and tell me what you think. I will say as far as my personal experience goes, I saw a tri-field meter go out. It had full battery. It's flashing, it's now dead. I did smell sulfur, which is supposedly a common thing on the ranch. It was enough where I was like, this is... Yeah, now it's gone, right? Uh, now I got it still. Home. And some weird shit happened to me when I came back home. In fact, working on this episode remotely from the East Coast, my editor encountered the exact same electromagnetic anomalies experienced by Skinwalker visitors on his computer. You tell me what you think about all of this. My contrarian opinion here is we're actually over-indexed on empiricism and under-indexed on theory. And we actually just need better theories to explain all of these disparate anomalous occurrences. If you're trying to find a needle in a haystack, having more sensors and making your haystack bigger doesn't necessarily help. I have to say I'm happy and a bit relieved to leave this episode behind me. Until next time, I'm Jesse Michaels, and this is American Alpha. Thank <laughs> you.